y'all. Welcome back to My Little Geekery's Adventures in Altera. Where we last, le last left off, um, Luea uh, and, his, and his animal companions were on their way home. Uh, he went back to the palace of uh, the High Elf King and Queen. And he was there for um, the rest of the, the autumn uh, season. Uh, it has steadily started to grow colder uh, the weeks that he have, he has been at home his his turtle his his jad his his uh, gleaming jade turtle has a new home in a the best way I could describe this is a uh, have, have you ever been to one of those enormous greenhouse conservatories it's it's rather like that. Uh, elven royalty, particularly high elven royalty, have the habit of creating these enormous conservatory greenhouses so that they can have creatures and insects and plants uh, from all over the world in, in their kingdom. Uh, in, and in many cases, actually growing food that they otherwise would not be able to have, such as banana plants, coconuts, coffee. Coffee is, 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 is a bit of an oddball, as is cocoa. Uh, co the, the, the cacao uh, pods and, and the cacao beans themselves actually not being uh, consumed as they would be today, but as they would have been in antiquity uh, by the Aztec people, essentially ground up, uh, mixed with some spices and drunk. Honestly, that's kind of how we drink our coffee. So I, I honestly, I, I, I really don't see why drinking cocoa wouldn't be all that different, but it is, it is, it is a bit of a thing with, with elven royalty to have these enormous greenhouses. And in many cases, these greenhouses with these glass panes that have all been magically strengthened, uh, with glass steel spells just so that they can literally never break. And they go through great expense to, to create these elaborate uh, places for, for them to, to grow food, to have their parties, to essentially have these just giant places of green uh, and tropical climes during, you know, what might be the middle of winter. Uh, the... The kingdom, uh, the Northern Elven Kingdom, does tend to have rather cold and bitter winters. Uh, the winds of which that would be coming off of the mountains ha are dulled quite a lot by the enormous forest in which they live. But the temperatures are, are still very bitter, and during the winter, not a lot of daylight is actually to be had. Uh, so uh, lighting magic is used to illuminate them. Uh, they are, they're heated sometimes with enormous, uh, furnaces under the floors, uh, through conduit piping, which is a, a, a technology that they got from the humans to the south, uh, who have created in sort of their own enormous network of, of plumbing and, uh, heating systems, uh, for the interiors of of the wealthy, uh, they actually have central heating, which is, which is a, a bit of a brand new thing, as is uh, some indoor plumbing. And uh, the the elves are we're rather quick to adopt the these technologies because why wouldn't you want, you know, warm houses and indoor plumbing? Why wouldn't you? Uh, but these are these are only features that you can actually find in the well-to-do. Um, and Luar has, has gone home as a prince and he's, he, he enjoys the lifestyle for a bit only to kind of go restless and, and wanting to wander, um, even more now that he has actually gone adventuring and, and gotten a taste of, of what it is like to actually manage, uh, some, some, uh, of the evils that might actually be within his own kingdom and he 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 just doesn't want he he knows winter is coming but he just doesn't want to stay put anymore 
uh, then he has to, especially when the snows do start, they tend to not stop until spring. So he's sort of eager to, to get back out and going. Uh, he doesn't entirely know where to go. However, he does, he is aware of, of several locations to the north where some of the uh, winged elves tend to exist along the mountains. He, he is aware of several famous, one could say dungeons up to the north um, that have, through the centuries, been, you know, cleaned out and uh, scoured, mapped, um, treasures looted, uh, and that has also served, several have also served for bases for dragons and orcs that are, orcs by that, again, for a reminder who might not have, have heard previously, orcs have been virtually wiped out of, of this area of the continent, um, much to, uh, much to the shame of, of many elves, uh, and druids today who, who seek a more natural balance with the world. Um, they're, they're rather shameful of, of such a war that was conducted, uh, generations ago. Uh, and he, he's decided to go up north. Uh, he's leaving his turtle at home. He is, however, uh, taking Sir Kojuru, uh, his dog. His dog has been recently uh, outfitted with some barding. Uh, I, have, I have taken the opportunity to actually buy uh, some, some uh, plate mail barding for uh, Sir Kojuru. Uh, so his armor class is now increased, um, rather significantly, um, actually, uh, with his, with his dexterity, well, ma pl max plus two dexterity bonus, but it's, it's fine. I mean, it's still, it's still much better than it was, and since, um, Courage certainly helped out, uh, during the, during the, uh, haunted, during the haunted rider, uh, issue with, in the, with, uh, the halfling farmer, uh, who are, has decided to actually sort of, well, uh, if my, my dog will certainly serve as a fine adventuring companion, but I, I would like to protect my dog from whatever might try to harm him. So I, so I went ahead and I purchased some barding for him. I went through and I, got rid of quite a few items on his, in, in my sort of treasure list here, particularly of things that I just, I really don't need. I kind of, I, I kind of thought that I might actually use some of the rabbit fur to maybe trim out some cloaks or everything, but then I, I thought, well, I'm a nobleman. I wouldn't just wear just plain old rabbit fur. I... So, you know, it's, it's, I, I, can, I can sell it for, for bulk rate. It's fine. Um, I did keep a few other things. Uh, there's, there was a magic item that was called a levitation quill. I still haven't the slightest idea what that was. I, I never had it identified. But it was, I, I needed quite a lot of gold to get this barding for my dog. So I decided to just go ahead and sell that. I did, however, keep my crystal ball. Because you never know when you're going to need a crystal ball for whatever reason. Um, so, uh, we, we travel to the north, um, dressed in some, some cold weather gear. Uh, and we go to uh, some a rather famous dungeon um, that is, is part of... Now, at this point, it, it's... We we've reached the hills. The 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 forest has given the forest of dadacious uh, trees and such have have given have started to give way to uh, pines. Um, but the in the hills uh, there's there's been several landslides um, over the centuries, uh, particularly in this location where where a well known dungeon is located. Um, it used to be a, a lair. Uh, ages ago, uh, that was used, um, 
by various creatures over over the years. Um, at one point, it was known to be uh, the lair of a of a green dragon who has long since been dead or driven off. Nobody's entirely certain which. Nobody really has has had word of of a of a ancient green dragon being slain, so it might have just been driven off. Nobody's entirely sure. I've I've used some of my connections to attempt to get some some info on it, but I I also found out that the that the hills have act, have been fairly quiet in this area. There hasn't been a lot of activity. So I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to find, but if, if nothing else, this is, this is sort of going to uh, scratch an adventuring itch, uh, a wandering itch that has has struck Luar. Um, the the reason, main reason why he has he has a, a bit of a wanderlust at this juncture, I have chosen um, the Fey Wanderer. Uh, the Fey Wanderer uh, feature for my ranger. Um, so he his his Fey blood has, with his with with a bit of experience under his belt, his Fey blood that is deep within his ancestry is starting to kick in. So he is he he's starting to sort of want to wander um, the the countryside as opposed to r remain in place in sort of the, the decadent palace. Um, and he finds uh, the entrance of this dungeon. Uh, let's see here. It's a, a fairly wide opening. It's it actually was an ancient temple at one at one juncture, uh, but with the collapse of of uh, the hillside at at as I said at one point it it was long since abandoned and then became a place for brigands and and evil creatures to, to sort of layer up and and use to uh, waylay travelers uh, so I can I can see a fairly large entrance with stairs um, leading up I set my horse off to the side in the trees I put the barding on Sir uh, Kurjuru and I pull out my short swords as I come to the stairs. Well, as I come to the stairs, I notice that they're, uh, they're they actually sparkle a little bit, which is strange. It's very strange. It, there appears to be a, a layer of fine gold dust. It's, that's very strange. Why? This can't be real gold. It, it certainly cannot be. I... That's, I would, hmm, that's, that's very weird. All right, let's, let's make, let's make a perception check. No, there seems to be some strange markings actually written on one of the sets of stairs. I take a step. I take, I go, I go up to the marking to check that out, and I actually trigger a dark trap, which kind of punks off of my armor, thankfully. Uh, but, whoa, okay. Um, I, the, the mark maybe was to actually warn me of that. Instead, I just sort of triggered it. Uh, okay. Alrighty. That, okay, that might... The gold dust is maybe a, a, a trap for someone greedy and attempting to sort of scoop it up, I guess? I... That's very strange. That's... That... That seems very... There are... There are traps set here, which means there is definitely something here. If there are... If there are traps that are... That are laying in wait, much like before when um, there was a thief... There was there was a thief who had set a a line trap across a stairway. This is a different type of trap, um, also set across some stairs. So I'm definitely going. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep an eye out. Let's make another perception check. Oh, that's another failure. 
That is... I even get bonuses. That is that is an absolute failure. I even, at this point, since I know that there are traps, I, I actually gain a bonus to detect more traps. But for some bizarre reason, I completely miss the... I'm just not looking out and noticing the mark on the fifth step that is telling me that there's another trap. And thankfully, that one misses... That dart, poison dart, misses me by a long shot. And I'm... Wow, that's... This is not boating well for the rest of the night. Okay. Well, fine. Let's let's head up to to the doors. Um, there are four doors in total, um, all evenly spaced or relatively easily evenly spaced, with a pair of statues. Um, sort of featured in the front. They seemed to be. Hmm. They seem to be of kobolds. Perhaps at one point there was a kobold cult or group here. I I would I mean I've heard that kobolds can make some traps. I don't I can't imagine that they would have a trap covered with gold. These well these statues also look like they've been here for a long time. Very very strange. Cocti. <sighs> nope. I'm, I'm just, I'm failing the trap checks. I just am. All right, let's choose, let's choose a door to go into because they all sort of meander around the same place. Uh, one, two, there, one, two, three, four. I'll just stop from the top and go down. So let's see which door I check. I go in the first door. Yeah, you know what? That seems, that seems legit. Hmm. Room two. Let's see here. These mirror image rooms were storage areas for wondrous items. Each holds three statues. They've been smashed. Okay, it's it says that the statues will slowly and magically repair themselves to be ready for the next dungeon invaders. But it doesn't actually say what they what they are or what they do. I Hmm. This is well, now I can see why this I I I purchased this for for not very much on Drive Through RPG, and it only had like a, a three star rating, and I was like, it's just it's just a couple page adventure how, adventure how why would it have why would it have three stars? And now I actually see why because there's nothing like it, you you have a you have a map and you have some rooms with some stuff that's statted out in it, but there's nothing else. There's, there's nothing in this adventure to actually make it just ready use. <sighs> this is just not good. Um, you know what? I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue even though I don't, I don't want to, but I'm going to ignore the fact that it says that the statues have magically repaired themselves to, ready to attack the next adventurers because there's, there's nothing here to tell me what they are absolutely nothing. So I'm just going to ignore the fact that that exists and I'm just going to keep going. I just, <sighs> this is aggravating. I, you know, though, honestly, the last time I was at a game store, I should have just gotten, I, I was tempted to get the zero to CR five, um, challenge deck. I should have done that. I didn't do it. I should have to just literally take, you know, shuffle the cards and randomly draw up monsters. I, I should have done that. I didn't do that. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot else in here. So let's... Oh, that's a crit. Okay. So I noticed that there is a door along one wall. It is, it is a secret door. Sort of worked into the stone. Uh, and I give it a push to the inside and find a passage on the other side. Again, the information that actually specifies that there's a hidden door is not actually in the, the actual room description. It is at the very beginning of the adventure. Oh, I didn't even realize that it, it specifies that the ceilings are five foot high. The ceilings are not five foot high. <laughs> They're, they're at least going to be 10 foot high. 
Cuz if if it if an if an adult dragon was supposed to have lived in this in in this dungeon, it's the ceilings are not going to be 5 foot high. What? No. The dragon's not going to The ceilings are 10 foot high. This is wow. This is This is just bad. This is just written badly. Uh, okay. All right, onward. Uh, onward to room six, it looks like. Okay. Uh, let's see. There is a skull marker drawn on the floor. Well, there were there were markings on the floor, and there were poison dart traps. I I'm assuming that there's another one here, but I cannot see it for the life of me. I genuinely cannot. So. Alas, I'm going to have to trigger it because I just, I can, apparently I cannot make out traps at all. And it, the poison dart actually just kind of, once again, just kind of bounces off of, off of my armor. Um, punk. Because at least I have been rolling low on two hits for these poison darts. That, that, and honestly, that's the only thing I can say for that. I've been rolling really low for that. I climb up a set of stairs and I reach a larger room. Uh, there is a vat with that's filled with liquid right in the middle of the room. There's a very acrid smell about it. Along the far wall are four tables and in the corner in the four corners of the room, are four smaller kobold statues uh, that seem to have leathery faces. It looks like that they that there's actual like dried skin that has been stretched over the face of the statue, which is rather rather creepy. Ooh, I should have I should have pulled out. I should have pulled out my lantern a while ago. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna retroactively say that once it got dark enough, I actually would have pulled out my uh, magical lantern that I got in my last dungeon adventure uh, and activated it. Uh, and it creates a light that only I can see. I, that uh, creates a light that only I and my allies can see. So my dog can actually use it to, to see rather well. Although he's got a nose to let it build things. Uh, there's two open doorways. Let's see. Do I head to the right or left? Right will be even. Right it is. Okay. So I'm going to head to the right. Uh, what the, what hallway number is this? Seven. I head up north, and once again, once again, there's another skull and crossbones that is drawn out in the middle of the floor. Okay. All right, come on. I'm actually going to use, I'm going to use my, since the, since my blue D20s have not been working for, for checking for traps, let's see if my, my little pony D&D &D 20 will work. Yes! Finally! Wow. It, 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 D, it was a DC 10 and already giving a plus 3 uh, just because I, I know that all of the the traps are, are located. There's with the marker there and that's so okay. Yay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely certain what the heck's going on there but it I, I have a feeling that that's, that would be bad news if I actually triggered that. So, yeah. Let's head... Okay, there's another open doorway, so let's head into there. There's another fairly large vat of acid in the middle of this room. There's several barrels in the room, though. So, I'm going to check out the barrels. Ah, uh, four barrels hold treasure... 18 gold, a 50 gold piece silver ingot. Oh, that's nice. 200 copper pieces. A dagger plus one. Ooh. Uh, Masterwork set of jeweler's tools. A shield. 
and a set of pan pipes, and in another barrel there's just an emerald ring, I guess. I'm going to go, there's another, there's another uh, doorway that leads back out in the opposite direction, so I'm just going to like peer in there, and I realize that it's just a mirror, it's a mirror image of, of the room on the other side, uh, and there seems to be a lot of that happening. Everything just seems to sort of loop back in on itself, and there's there's a picture of another skull in the middle of the floor. And I'm really, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not going to check that out. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be a whole lot here. Theoretically, there's there there is in fact supposed to be a black dragon, a young black dragon here, but it doesn't I mean, I literally mean theoretically because it mentions a young black dragon now using this as its lair, but it doesn't actually say that the dragon is here. It genuinely doesn't. It just says that the dragon is just now using it as its lair. It doesn't actually say that the dragon is here, which is a little strange. Um, okay. I'm going to I'm going to head back and I'm going to carefully I'm going to carefully poke around cuz there's a couple of there's a couple of sort of side corridors that I haven't investigated. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to I'm going to wander back the way I came and and poke about uh let's see. I'm going to head to the end of the one one corridor uh just kind of leads to a to just sort of a dead end and there's a a sack in the in the very end of it. And inside is a potion. Okay. Well, I'll take the potion. So I head back. I wander back into the room with the acid vat and the four statues. Uh, let's take a closer look around here. There are other there are other barrels but they don't, they seem, they, they seem to be broken or empty, so I'm just going to ignore those. And I'm just going to kind of head back down, and I have a, to, to another, to another doorway, and I have a feeling that that is going to lead to a hallway exactly like the one I was just in, because everything is, is symmetrical and, and, and a mirror image of itself, and sure enough it is. The, uh, the only difference is that I come across some skeletons lying on the, a set of bones and skeletons that are on the ground. Uh, okay, so let's check this out. They don't, they're rather interesting. They don't, they don't seem to be elvish or human. They seem to be... Two of them are rather large. One is medium sized, and one seems to have the legs of of a of a goat. Maybe uh, let me make an intelligence check. See if I can figure out what the skeleton is. Oh, it's seventeen. Okay. Um, my guess is that it's a satyr. Uh, satyrs are native to, to the elven forest. I'm definitely going to know what a satyr looks like. There are a pair of horns that are, that are sort of set into the skull. Um, well, there's really nothing I can do about any of that. Um, well, might as well poke about. Uh, there's another set of pan pipes with the satyr. That's not really a surprise. And uh, one of one of the larger creatures seems to have an earring sort of set into his dried out husk of an ear. Nature DC ten reveals the feather is an owl. Okay, seventeen. Um, it is a pearl and feather ear stud. Okay. Well, I will take that. Um, Kind of wander toward down the end, down the end of the hall. I expect to see the room that I just sort of appeared into. Saw the another skull drawn out in the middle of the floor and went nope, and then turned around and came back. 
Um, in this case, there's actually a portcullis at the end of this hallway actually keeping me from entering that space. Um, so, and I don't really see a way to raise it, which is kind of strange. Maybe it's just sort of wedged in here as a, as a, as a way to keep people from actually having two ways into a dragon's lair, because that, that would honestly make sense to me. If, if a dragon was use, is starting to use this as a lair, I can imagine that, that, that they were trying to, um, sort of build some defenses to keep people from poking about. Speaking of which, I might actually want to sort of get out of here. I'm not entirely sure I want to face a dragon. Head back out towards the secret doors. Pull one open. Uh, let's see. Since the dark mantles aren't actually given as a monster here, in the adventure, I will just go to D&D &D Beyond and actually bring up the monster stats for, for the Dark Mantle, because as I push open the door, suddenly a Dark Mantle that has been waiting for me, put push, pull the door open, a Dark Mantle has been waiting for me on the other side to uh, attack. Oh boy. Let's see if it actually manages to surprise me. Ooh, got a 12. Uh, stealth is plus 3, so that'll be a 15. <laughs> it got surprise on me! Yay! Oh, man, okay. So it will actually manage to outright attack me as soon as I pull open the door, and that is going to hit. Oh, what is... Okay. It is going to try and grab a hold of me with its tentacles and crush me. Six points of damage. Ah. Initiative time. Uh, what is my initiative? Plus four. I have a 17 and it has a nine. So... Put the pumpkin light down. Draw swords. Attack. What is this armor class? Armor class. Armor class. Eleven. First attack did not hit. Second attack did. Okay. Alright. Let's do some damage. Oh! A one. That's that's awful. Okay, I I mean five points of damage. All well and good, but that's just that's just awful. Sir Kujru is going to make an attack since he's right with me. He's gonna bark and leap up and try and grab a hold of one of the tentacles of this. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, Sir Kojuru is also a small creature. Oh, and the Dark Bantle gets a special bonus against small creatures, so. All right, what is... Oh, he might have grabbed a hold of a tentacle. Yes, he did. And he takes a mighty bite out of the creature. See if he can do better than me. <laughs> as his... As his Break into the rubbery skin of the dark mantle. What do we got here? Uh, two plus two, four points of damage. Oh, oh! Actually, Sir Kojuru gets a bonus to small creatures too. Because he's a terrier. D4 plus two piercing damage, and a small or smaller creature is grappled. Escape DC nine. And a dark mantle is a small monstrosity. Oh, excellent! So, okay, so the Dark Mantle is actually going to have to try and break free. What is the Dark Mantle's strength? Okay, he's actually, a, a Dark Mantle is actually pretty strong. So it's going to have to break free of the grapple. And it definitely does. It, it wrenches the, its tentacle out of, out of Sir Kojuru's mouth. Um, oh, and now there's, there's two... 
there's two of us to attack. So let's see. My dog will be the will be the odd. I will be even. Four. Even. Okay, so it will attack me again. And a five is going to miss. So that will be that initiative. Next round. Eighteen and fourteen definitely both hit. Well, that's that's still some terrible damage, honestly. I still rolled another one. That's just it's just awful, honestly. Uh, so that's five points of damage. Eight, twelve, twelve points of damage. Oh, it's it's hurt. It is it is hurt. Sir Kojuru is going to attempt to attack again. Uh, an eleven. He he bit a hold of a tentacle again. Ooh, a whopping three points of damage, but it is actually enough. Once again, Sir Kojuru uh, actually takes down another creature for me. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, not quite sure where this creature came from since I failed my check, but we're going to continue heading back out. There were other barrels in the room with the statues statues that allegedly are supposed to be animated but I have no stats for. The map shows pictures of barrels but it doesn't say anything about the barrels so I'm just going to assume that like before they're smashed or empty. So that is what I am going to assume and I am going to head back out. As I head back out toward the entrance the other dark mantle that was sitting on the other statue is going to see if it can surprise me. And it might with an 18 plus, what was it, three? Yes. I need a 21 to no. <laughs> Again, I fail. And another dark mantle manages to surprise me because apparently I am just all about getting surprised tonight. Yep. Oh, and a 19. It definitely hits. Oh. Ow. Eight points of damage. That That is that is a hurdy. Okay. Initiative time. Oh, it looks like the dark mantle is going to go first with, with a 20. Yeah, he's, he's definitely going to go. Oh, man. Max damage. I am... I am a hurt. I am definitely a hurt. I... For my attack, I am not actually going to attack. I am going to... I am going to use... My... Eladrin... Talent... Um, I am going to face step. I am going to turn into a piece of mist and basically vaporize in front of the dark mantle. And just float away. <laughs> oh, yep. Okay. Although my poor dog is there. Although I have misty away, my dog, unfortunately, is still right there because I didn't think that, oh, wait, my dog isn't going to actually know to move away when I do perform this act. So the, the dark mantle is going to attempt to attack my dog. And he misses, actually. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, I put armor on my puppers. He, the dark mantle just kind of like tries to reach around and grab a hold of my dog. Uh, but Sir Kojuru uh, just kind of leaps out of the side and a tentacle kind of scrapes his, his actual barding uh, and puts a scratch in it. And I am going to reform 60 feet away. And whistle for my pup. 
who is going to come bounding along? Uh, thankfully, my dog speed is 40. Uh, so once I whistle and he takes off, he is actually going to be able to move faster than the dark mantle. And we are basically going to run away! <laughs> Boy, we didn't really get got some treasure out of this but uh, yeah honestly it was this this I, I understand that is it's a mini dungeon and all but this really wasn't this was just not written well it, it and honestly wasn't it yeah I'm, I'm gonna get back to my horse and ride off and, and make off with my with my with my booty and my puppers, and I'm going to get some healing because I am down to one hit point. <laughs> wow, that that was cl again. That was close. I ooh, I'm rather glad that I didn't that I didn't do the whole um, animated statue thing because that would have been really tough. You know, I I, I kind of get it. It says two to four characters of level one through three. Uh, it doesn't, you, you, this was going to have to require a GM to prep a little bit and have some extra monsters just in case if it turned into a cakewalk. But even as it was written, this was tough for a third level character, for a single third level character. Even, even with my, even with my dog as, as backup party member, this was, this was kind of tough. Um, I think that the, the level the level actually needed to be to be up up a little bit on this because that's just yeah that's that's just not going anywhere well i i did manage to actually kill a dark mantle which will give me some experience but yeah that wow once again it just i i had i had originally purchased a different module by by this by the same uh publishing group I don't know if it was actually by the same writer or not it was a goblin cave and I thought that and it said that it was for it was kind of it, again it was a lot like this one but in but as but se the setup was actually that the goblins have started to use it as as sort of their stomping ground instead of just the beginnings of a dragon lair and I'm rather glad that I did not, in fact, choose that one. Because I have a feeling that that would have been really, really tough. Uh, I would, even though, th once again, it was a, it was a, it was supposed to be a first level adventure. But I took one look at it and I went, are you sure this is supposed to be a first level adventure? Because... I, I, I just get a, per, a cursory glance of it just made me go, no, maybe I should choose something a little easier. And I'm kind of glad I did because this was, this was easier, but, and it might've been much, much easier if I made more of my trap detecting roles, but it just... It I, honestly, I it was it was hard. I honestly think that, that one was harder than it really needed to be. Uh, and once again, I've just kind of willy nilly gone adventuring, and everything just kind of turned out not particularly great for me. So, you know, I'm I'm just I'm gonna go home. Yep, I my wanderlust is sated. I'm I'm gonna go home. I'm I'm gonna go home and, and sleep in my my nice warm soft bed again. Gonna take a nice long rest and then I'm just gonna go home <laughs> because this is this is kind of is just awful so okay um, yeah so Luar uh, live lives to fight another day although he did have to kind of uh, run from run from uh, the monster oh well what are you gonna do um, I didn't I have several I have several new um, actions that I can take now that I didn't really bother to use. 
I can actually, I, I, I can, for my Fey Wanderer, I have primeval awareness, which allows me to detect uh, whether aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, Fey, fiends, or undead are present within one mile of my location. So I could have, I could have probably have used some wonky face sense to detect whether or not there was a young, young dragon in the area. But it really wouldn't have mattered because they weren't in the dungeon to begin with. Um, although I didn't use a, a different ability that could, could have, I could have really used against the Dark Mantle. I, I can literally imbue my short swords with a magical energy that will allow me to to gain additional damage to my weapons. I didn't think about that. I only just reached the third level and I again still a fairly young elf, still kind of went stupid 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 stupid. Why didn't you do that? You have this ability. You can imbue your your swords with magical energy. Why didn't you do that? It's really only useful to, it, it's useful, really useful for two-handed fighting because you imbue one weapon. So if you're actually using one weapon in each hand, you actually imbue two weapons. They're only really good for striking once against a particular target, but if I'm doing an additional 2d6 points of damage, it still doesn't matter. I it, it would have really have been useful. Um, and I just did not honestly think about that. Because I'm still young and I'm still green. And oh shoot, I completely forgot that I can do this now! <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to go home and just rethink this. I, I, must, I must be smarter than this. But I am impulsive and I am young and I must go out into the world and do the things. So yeah. Well, that is my adventure for today. I'm still exceedingly disappointed in this. I'm, I'm glad that at least it, in, it included a monster that I could just as easily just bring up in D&D uh, &D Beyond. And it wasn't some weird creature that was only available through that publisher that I would have had to have clicked on. Because there, uh, there were a lot of things that, that I could technically click on, and I'm just like, I don't really want to click on random links in your PDF because I don't know where they go. So that's kind of a no. I did, I, I did that for the, the poison darts just to see what it clicked to. And it just, it kind of went to information from the written by the publisher about poison traps. Not specifically that trap which was a little weird I, if yeah I it really it really wasn't written well it, it just honestly it's yeah it just it was not good I just I gave it the lowest level because I was I was using it for the lowest level you know a third level character a single third level character so it would have been like d10 temporary d10 damage but it's still but a d10 damage for a poison dart trap, if he had gotten hit, would have been, could have been potentially lethal. Um, so, yeah. Again, I think that the, that the CR rating for that dungeon was seriously messed up. I, I just, yeah. I, that was just, uh, that was just bad. So, oh well. Maybe next time it will be better. Maybe next time I will actually have purchased those challenge cards and I can just randomly shuffle them or I can actually make my own tables, which I kind of keep forgetting to do. But oh well, what are you going to do? All right. This has been Adventures in Altera. And until next time.